Hi everyone, Scott Radigan from Functional Lawyer and I'm back to let you know about a growing trend in HIPAA enforcement by the Department of Health and Human Services um, and by extension the Office of Civil Rights uh, that enforces HIPAA and all of its regulations. So HHS has just announced recently its 19th enforcement action on patients' right to access. Now for the past year or so, they have put a really big emphasis on patients having the right to access their PHI or their designated record set. Um, and so you should be aware of some of the basic rules. Um, and just as a refresher or a reminder, or if you're not aware of these rules, you want to pay close attention as well um, and update your policies and procedures accordingly. If you don't already have written policies and procedures, for HIPAA privacy and security rules, it is a requirement under HIPAA. So if you don't have that yet, reach out to me. We have a template at functionallawyer.com um, or get one in place as soon as you can. That is a requirement no matter the size of your entity. Um, but let's just go over the subject of today's video and blog, and that is patients' right to access their records. Now, as you all know, or you should know, um, is that they don't have an absolute right to every record, specifically psychotherapy notes um, is one example that they don't have access to. Or another example is um, any notes or records prepared if you have reasonable anticipation of a pending lawsuit or a pending other claim made against you. If you're preparing that for litigation or for the other adjudications, that may happen at the state level in front of the medical board, um, then you don't have to prepare, you don't have to show them those notes. That's um, uh, that's not included in the information they have a right to access. But let's go over what they have a right to, uh, what that includes, and, and how you need to respond, in what time frame you need to respond, in what form, uh, and in what manner, form and format. So very quickly, if a patient requests their medical records, whether they want them sent to themselves or to a third party, um, you have up to 30 days to respond. Um, now, HHS and the rules state that 30 days is the upper limit. Ideally, you'll respond as soon as you can, reasonably do it. And they even say that if you have an EMR or EHR, that you should respond as soon as possible, almost immediately. Um, so, but that being said, you have up to 30 days um, to respond. If you know that it's going to take you longer than 30 days, you should reach out to the patient and tell them, hey, we're storing that at an offsite storage facility. It's going to take two weeks to get out there. And then we've got to sift through the boxes for a long time in case of older records. Um, then you reach out to them and let them know. And there will be another 30 days there. So up to 60 days before you have to really give them some sort of a substantive response. But ideally, you will respond as soon as possible within, you know, two weeks, maybe sooner. Um, and if you can, do it as soon as you can so you don't forget or um, it doesn't fall off the back of your um, burners, basically. And all of a sudden, it's day 31, right? It's a very easy mistake to make. And so just don't do it. Train your staff if you have them. That any requests for access need to be done promptly um, and responded to promptly uh, as as much as possible. So um, they don't have an absolute right. You can deny their their request. Um, you have to respond in writing um, if it's one of those um, examples I, I said earlier. Um, but Generally, you're going to going to give them their PHI, uh, and that's basically their designated record set, uh, according to the rules. Um, they have a right to request it in electronic form, in hard copy form, and electronic form can take uh, lots of different formats. So it can be PDF, it can be a CD or CD-ROM if you're old. Um, it can be a jump drive or USB flash drive that has several different names, but another uh, portable storage device, they can request it via that. They can request PDF or MS Word um, or another word processor. Um, and if you have the ability to comply with that format, 
you should comply with that format. And if you can't, reach out to the patient and say, hey, we, we don't have access to that, or um, I don't even know where you buy writable CDs these days, or my computer can't write CDs because I don't even have a CD drive. Um, then, you know, you reach out to them and say, would you mind having a PDF? Or would you mind logging into the portal and you can download everything right there? Um, so you, there is some back and forth there so long as the patient agrees. If you keep paper charts, they can request their PHI in electronic format. And if you have access to a scanner, uh, you are obligated to, to scan it if it's readily accessible to you. Uh, you're obligated to scan it and, and send it to them. Now, how you send it to them is another question. Um, ideally, you'd want to send it to them via an encrypted method, but lots of times patients request unencrypted methods. Um, so HHS actually says explicitly that patients have a right to request their PHI through unencrypted means, including the US mail and through electronic mail or email. Uh, if that's the case, particularly email, you want to let the patient know, hey, even though I pay for the HIPAA compliant version of Gmail or I pay for a third party encryption software to encrypt my email, and maybe you do as well, patient, um, but you should know that in transit, there is a security risk that it could be read by a third party or stored uh, by a third party that way. And if they say, yeah, that's great, then you can email it to them and that is fine for HIPAA purposes, so long as they consent. Now, there's a lot more to it than that, but just be just be aware that, you know, an average fine for this sort of thing is anywhere from $5,000 to $25,000 on average for smaller companies. Um, just one, if someone makes a request for their records, respond promptly uh, and say, yes, we can honor your request, we'll get it to you by next week, or no, we can't honor that request because it includes um, psychotherapy notes or, or whatever it is. For whatever reason, you can't respond, whether that's we have them off site and it'll be 21 days or, or it'll be we don't have an EMR, so I can't give them to you via CD-ROM. I can scan them and send them to you via PDF. Is that, is that acceptable, patient? Um, that sort of thing. So, just know that HHS is putting a great deal of emphasis on patients' right to access their records. And uh, it's just an easy thing. And because it's so easy to do, it's also very easy to not respond and kind of have a mistake. And if the patient is not that understanding, or more likely, if they're going to see another doctor and they need those records in a reasonable amount of time before that next appointment, they're going to need them as, as soon as they can. And if they don't, they're out you know, a day off work and the fees to go to that doctor without their records present. So they may get upset and file a claim um, with OCR. So very easy to do, just pay attention to the patient's uh, request for access to their PHI, uh, respond promptly. Um, if you can give it to them in a format that they request, do so. Um, you can charge some reasonable fees. There are a lot of exclusions to what you can charge, um, but if you're going to charge them fees, you should let them know in advance, hey, if you want it on a USB drive, we have them, it'll cost you $2 and it'll cost, you know, the hourly rate for our staff to put your record on the USB drive or for our staff to actually do the copying or do the scanning. Um, you're not allowed to charge for the time it takes them to find the records and locate them and make sure that they don't include any um, privileged information or, or things that are like psychotherapy notes. So there is some um, fine print there, uh, but let them know that if they request a CD-ROM version um, or writable CD, I don't even know what they're called anymore, um, that you know if you'd like them to purchase it, that just let them know in advance. Um, so again, just to recap, HHS is really focusing on this. So respond to patients requests for access to their records promptly. If you can give it to them in the format they request and in the form that they request. Um, and um, to the extent possible, get their consent for fees in advance. And if they request it via unencrypted means, also get their consent um, to send it to them via unencrypted means like email um, as well. 
And just know that HHS also um, explicitly states that email and postal mail are definitely readily producible for covered entities to do. So those are two things that you are allowed to do, um, but specifically for email, you wanna let them know it's unencrypted. So pay attention to that, avoid a bunch of headaches and, and corrective action plans from OCR and HHS. And most importantly, avoid hefty fines um, for your practice so that you can stay open and serve the people in your community. I will see you guys in the next one.